Hey there everybody, this is Brett from Brett Kilns Pro Gaming and Reviews. Um, I put up a question a little while ago, what would you guys like to see more of? And a few people said that they'd like to see my top 10s, top 5s of things. And I thought I'll go with what I'm strongest with first, or what I play the most, which is definitely RPGs. So I decided that I'd do my top 10 today for you guys. Top 10 most influential to me, the ones that got me into them the most, the ones that I enjoyed the most. Um, you might agree, you might disagree. Can't wait to see what you guys think of it. Let's get started with number 10. Now he's going to put you straight on the edge. Number 10, I have Final Fantasy 7. Ooh. Why do you pick 7? Isn't 7 the best one? Uh, the reason being is I never played it until a little while ago. I actually, when I was young, I got it. Couldn't understand it. It was too challenging for me when I was a kid. Um, I put it away. And then I recently found it on the PlayStation Store, re-got it, uh, played it through, mad enjoyed it. It's definitely up there as one of the best RPGs of all time, and I completely understand and respect that. I think it's just the timing that makes it so low on my list, um, the timing of, of whence I played it. But it was an absolutely brilliant game. The way that the game was done, it is essentially everything that a Final Fantasy game represents all in one game. Also, the turn-based combat system was absolutely brilliant. The character progression was great. Um, some of the characters they didn't really flesh out that much but also another strong point was just how well all of those games connected together providing they hadn't even made uh, Dirge of Cerberus, Advent Children, all of those things to it they all tied in together so well and that's what made Final Fantasy 7 such a great game but it's uh, definitely one for the ages but we've got to get started with number 9 now number 9 this is a game that kind of crept under the radar for me and impacted me greatly, but a lot of people probably haven't heard of it, and that is Tales of Zillia. Now, Tales of Zillia is a JRPG, and there's many other games that are set in the same kind of style. They're all called Tales of Something, something different every single time, and very much like Final Fantasies, they have their own unique spin in every game. Tales of Zillia was the first one that I played, and that's why it impacted me the most. It is by far not the best game in the Tales of series, but it is the one that influenced me to play all the rest of them. And there's hundreds of hours of content in them. The reason that I liked Tales of Zillia so much was not only because the combat was incredibly fun, all of the characters could actually bounce off each other and do combo attacks between them, which made it very fun to mix and match and learn all the different moves, but also because the character development was like something I'd never seen before. The amount of effort that the um, and the dialogue that they've put in this game is absolutely incredible. The English voice actors are really good. And they also spend a ridiculous amount of time going through the highs and lows of every character, which I greatly appreciated. And it even hints on a lot of the bad guys and the non-essential characters in the game. So the character growth in it was absolutely phenomenal. And every single game was like it, and I just couldn't believe it. Some of the newer ones have dropped off a little bit, but all of them are unique in their own way and definitely worth a play. But now it's time to get on to number eight. Eight, I put Persona 5. Now, the reason I did this, as opposed to not putting 4 or 3, which was single-handedly fucking amazing games in themselves, was the fact that I actually thought the Persona games were 2D fighting games. Just looking at the art style, whenever I walk past one in EB or anything like that, I actually thought they were just 2D fighting games. So I ignored them until Persona 5 came out. And I went, you know what? I run a review channel now. Might as well just have it a go at it. And I got lost for like 90 to 100 hours. I enjoyed it. It's combination of it being a dating sim, a school life game, and one of the most dedicated RPGs out there. I couldn't take my eyes off it the whole time. The art style was fantastic. The enemies were really cool. Very. Uh, I realized it was by the same creators of Shin Megami Tensei, which I played on DS and stuff, and I love those games. So the way that those games are constructed around the Japanese mythologies and all that kind of stuff, absolutely incredible definitely worth a go if you haven't played that yet but now i'm just going to breeze through these i don't want to go too in depth on all of them i just want to tell everybody my favorites and then talk to you all about it later so we're going to get on to number seven seven is one that probably a lot of people have one in the series at least is pokemon silver and gold but the reason is I never got the original ones. Once again, being Povo, I don't know. I blame mum. The fact that I couldn't get any of these games, get a hold of any of these games, it was when I finally got a hold of them, these ones became my favourite. Silver was the, the one in the Pokemon genre that I got first. 
Um, I swapped it with my sister. I ended up getting gold instead. I played it through. I absolutely loved it. I loved the the turn based system. I fell in love with the Pokemon. I loved everything about the game. Just like uh, the Persona games, uh, it just as soon as I had played it and I'd realised what how good it was, I started to jump in on conversations with kids at school. Started to trade battle. Got into the Pokemon scene, and it was single handedly Pokemon Gold and Silver that did that for me. So. I'd love to know from you guys what, what what's the Pokemon game that got you started. But that's enough about that. It's time for number six. Number six, I put Mass Effect 2. Now, I was really struggling with whether or not I was going to put one in here, but I loved everything about one. I thought the, the Star Wars-y kind of atmosphere, the lovable characters and all that. When I realized it all carried over into the second game and then they just expanded it in every single way possible, I was like, wow. This is, this is going to be incredible. This is going to be a game worth um, worth looking at in the future, and I hope that they make more of them. They did. They weren't that great, but at the same time, 2 and 1 stood out to me a lot, and I do recommend them to everybody. It's creative style as well of in introducing like an RPG kind of system into a shooter mechanic was really, really well done and carried over. Also with the fact that you could become mages and you could do like telekinetic -y kind of things and... You could also fuck damn near everything in the game. So it was, it was the best of all worlds. It was enjoyable. But we got to get started with number five. Now, number five. This, was, this is where it started to get really hard for me. Anything could have been above the next or below the next. I don't really... You know, it could. it's ever-changing for me. RPGs are very difficult titles, titles for me to cover because I love almost every single one of them and I'll put hundreds of hours into a good RPG. Arthur Xenoblade Chronicles, 250 hours. But, number five, I gave Final Fantasy 10. And the reason I gave 10 number five was because not only was it the first, um, one of the first RPGs I ever played, but it was also the first Final Fantasy that I dug into. I played 8 when I was really young and didn't understand it, so I didn't like it and I put it away and I forgot about it for a very long time. But when I was a little bit older, I played 10, I really enjoyed the combat mechanics. I loved that it was turn-based, but everybody had different things they had to kill. Things that they were better at killing, like Oren has the heavy armored enemies and the aerial enemies were for Waka, and I really enjoyed that aspect of the game. It made everything tactical and it made it fun while also having the summons, the magic, the crazy Final Fantasy storylines, and unfortunately, one of the worst laughing scenes that I've ever seen in video game history. <laughs> but other than that, I fell in love with the characters. I absolutely love the storyline, and I enjoyed probably damn near every minute of the game, except for some of the bosses that were stupidly hard, but I've beaten them now, so that's all that matters. All right, we gotta get started on number four. Number four, and could have honestly been number one in my opinion, is Monster Hunter World. Now, the reason I've given it a bit of a lower standing is just because of its incredibly hard um, rate of learning, I guess you'd say. To learn a Monster Hunter game takes a lot of time, uh, patience, and a lot of skill. And in all the previous games, uh, 3 and 2, which I had played as well, the games were absolutely incredible. Everything was like a boss battle, but the mechanics in it were sometimes a little bit clunky and hard to use. But when you mastered these or you got used to them, or played the multiplayer and utilized using your friends a lot more, the game was absolutely brilliant. It was such a well-fleshed out RPG that had everything in it that you possibly needed with a lot of random generation, a lot of um, different boss battles. The fun just never really stopped with it. And with sometimes like over a hundred different enemies to defeat in boss style scenarios, you just had so much content. You just, you were never gonna run out of things to do. Monster Hunter World carried over all of the aspects of a Monster Hunter game and made it more user friendly, which was not only absolutely incredible, but somehow the online has stood up to this day with almost no issues entirely, which I think is absolutely incredible. The game is brilliant. If you haven't played a Monster Hunter game before, I dare you to sit there for just 10 hours and just try and learn it. You'll be hooked, I guarantee it. It's a brilliant game. The DLC was fantastic for it, and I'm still playing it to this day. But we have to get started on number three. Number three. Now, this is where 
I needed 48 beers to figure out what came next. And I picked Witcher 3. Now, not only because of the similarities, 3, number 3, right, right, right. it was the fact that the Witcher games, I'd played the second one, and I found it quite challenging when I was younger and giving it a go. But when I went and revisited it, I was I really enjoyed the game. I thought it was great. And then when the third one came out, just like some of these other RPG titles, it expanded on it in every single way possible. The free roam in it was absolutely insane. The environments were gorgeous. Just the sheer amount of content in this game just blew me away. The side missions, constantly fighting things. You were just constantly changing your game plans for different things. Fighting stuff required you to take a different approach. Everything in this game was calculated. It was well done. And I just fell in love with it. As soon as I started playing number three, I was like, I can't stop playing this. I need to keep playing. 200 hours later, um, and a very glitchy last boss, I'd beaten the game and I felt empty inside because I'd just lost something that I loved so much. And I, I don't think many games have ever made me feel like that, let alone, um, uh, I guess, not a JRPG. So it was it was very interesting to see this spin-off style this, and to see Geralt back and in such a strong way. I loved everything. I can't say enough. I'll say love so many times. But we got to get to the big boys. It's time for number two. I could have easily at any given second overtook two with one at any stage. Any stage. I still can. I'm thinking about it. I could just change it right now. I'm in charge of this. You're not. I can I can do it. No. I'll keep it. I'll keep it the way I've written it down. Number two. Drum roll. Don't even have one. Number two. Fallout New Vegas. Now, a lot of people love number three a little bit more. Some people like the new one, I don't. I thought it was it was like a weaker version of the other ones, but Fallout New Vegas, to me, was one of the breakthrough games of RPG history in my brain. Every single thing about that game, I was just like, I need to do everything in this game. I need to dedicate my livelihood to fucking becoming high-leveled enough to kill that thing or go over there and do that. Or I need enough medicine points to talk to this guy. I, I spent hours just constructing everything and wasn't looking up on the internet i just spent days and days and days dedicated to this game just learning everything about it and just i couldn't get over it just the choices you could make that affect the storyline the characters that you take with you had pretty epic storylines in themselves plus the way the combat was done was just absolutely incredible with the freeze the stop motion freezing um, to me, it was perfected in Fallout New Vegas, and it couldn't really get any better than that. I loved it. I loved it. If you have never played Fallout New Vegas, then please, for the love of God, do yourself a favor. Get it. It's worth every damn second. It will take your life. We're going to break it. There's one big name, and I guess you've all guessed it by now, because if you haven't, you're not an RPG fan. Here it comes. The Elder Scrolls Skyrim, absolutely. Everything else blows me away, and it does. Like I get, I get constantly taken aback by games. I love everything to do with games and all that, but there's just every now and again, there's just one game, and it sits with you for the the rest of your life. Like you're gonna tell people about it. You're gonna remind them that that game exists. When a game can make so many memes and make so many videos dedicated to itself, you know already it's a good game. Skyrim took every possible thing about an RPG and it made it a livelihood. Every single thing that you did was part of your story. It felt like everything that uh, that you grew your character up to do, the choices that you made, the people that you took along with you, the things that you killed, it felt like everything you did was just a scratch on your story. It was just a little bit more in the novel of what your character's about to achieve in life. And it was, there's no games that make you feel quite like that than an Elder Scrolls. Oblivion was fucking fantastic too. But Skyrim was just absolutely incredible. The fighting dragons, the whole shouts thing was an amazing contribution to a game like this. The sheer amount of shit that you could do with any one character was insane. And just growing and building your character is just something that a lot of people, especially the the age that it came out for me, 
It just feels like you don't forget shit like that. And the memes are incredible. That's not why I took number one, but it's just a very high point. Memes of memes of life. But that's it. That is it. Now our brainstorming's over and now I need to save it for like another genre or some shit. So until then, I want to know what your top 10 is. Scribble it down, send it to me. Um, do whatever you got to do to tell me. I'm very interested to hear what you guys, what, what's impacted you the most. This is not necessarily the best to me. This is just what impacted me the most uh, growing up and what impacted me now as just well-constructed, beautiful, gorgeous RPG games with longevity, fun, and compatibility with anything. So I just, I loved it. So Skyrim is my number one. That's my top 10. Look forward to hearing from all you guys. I'm done and dusted. I've almost lost my voice from talking that much trying to get this done. But can't wait to hear what you guys have for me. So let me know. Like, subscribe, do all that shit. And I'll see you guys soon, BKers. It's been a pleasure. Skyrim. The Elder Skulls. Elder Skulls. Elder